Good freaking morning, everyone. I am happy to see your faces again. My name is Nick, and if you are new here, welcome to Nick's Fort. You can subscribe below. There's a little button. It is free, and if it is free, it's for me and you. Today, we are going to learn how to make a hyperlapse. So first off, some of you may not know what a hyperlapse is. Basically, in its simplest form, a hyperlapse is a time lapse where you move a small amount of distance over a long period of time, focusing on a single subject. It's a really cool effect. You might've seen channels on Instagram using it, like Beautiful Destinations uses it a lot. Taylor Cut Films is another guy who uses it a lot, and, and they do a fantastic job at making hyperlapses. It's a great way to up your production value and, and really add some pizzazz to your videos. So today, we're gonna look at how to make a hyperlapse using Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop, and Premiere Pro. This is a workflow that I really like because you have an opportunity to really manipulate the hyperlapse to its fullest extent across those three programs. So without further ado, well actually, first, let me give you guys a few tips. How about a few tips on shooting a hyperlapse? Tip number one, use a monopod. You can use a tripod, you can go handheld, but a monopod is the most efficient and stable option. Tip number two, select a subject. You want a building, a statue, something that's not moving to be your subject of your hyperlapse. Tip number three, bring up the grid on your camera and use the same spot on the grid on your subject in every photo. Tip number four, set your focus point to that same spot on your subject. Subject's always in focus, boom. Tip number five, move the same distance between every single photo you take, whether that's one step, one foot. If there's tiles on the ground, one tile. Tip number six, keep your camera level. Bring up the leveler in your menu and keep your camera level. And the last tip is think about how many photographs you need to take to make your hyperlapse the length that you want it to be. So if you're doing 24 frames a second, 24 photos equals one second. So think about that as you make your time lapse. All these tips are listed below along with all of the gear you need to make a hyperlapse. So go check that out. And without further ado, let's jump into Lightroom. We are under the development tab here. So do any of your adjustments to your image here that you want to do, and then apply them to the entire hyperlapse. I am not gonna adjust my exposure too much here because I shot this at sunset. So I'm gonna reserve my exposure changes for when we get into Photoshop. More on that in a second. These are not actually, these, these are real birds. These aren't fake birds. One of my friends who I absolutely adore and I hope he's watching this whole thing. He puts fake birds in his photos and that's cool. Like Peter McKinnon does that too. He has a tutorial about how to put fake birds in your photos. That's totally fine, but I still like to make fun of him for putting fake birds in his photos, especially when I get some real birds. Check out these real birds. Whoa, look how real they are flying around. Look at that. All right, so now we have our image looking good. We are going to go ahead and move into exporting our images. So select all your images and go up to export. And now we have our export menu open. So you're gonna choose your folder. I am choosing angle two, cause this is my second angle here. You wanna make uh, a custom name for your images. So I've decided PDX sign angle dose, uh, custom settings. You're gonna go down to custom name sequence. And then you're also gonna hit that again, go down to edit, and then you're gonna click right here under the sequence file, and then you're gonna hit sequence number 00001. Okay, cool, done. And so now your images are gonna be named in a sequential order, which is really important for this to work properly. So you make sure you do this step, a huge important step. Go down to the, the image quality 100%, JPEG is what you wanna be at. Uh, you don't need to limit the file size. 1920, because I'm gonna do an HD export, Resolution is 240, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit export and export my images. Yeah, we're gonna let that export, and then we're gonna jump into Photoshop for the next step in the hyperlapse editing process. I have already done the work for this, but I'm gonna show you how to do 
import your file. So go to open and go into the folder where you exported them from Lightroom. Make sure they're in sequential order. You know, none of them are missing. So if you have one and then two is missing, it's not gonna work. They have to be in order uh, numerically. So select your first image, go down to the bottom right and click image sequence and then hit open. And then you're gonna choose your frame rate. There's a drop down here. Pick what you want, what you need for your project. We're doing 23.976 for this, hit okay. And so now you've imported your hyperlapse into Photoshop. It looks a bit like just one image. Okay, so to fix this, go up to the right hand corner, drop down and click motion. Now we're in the motion platform for Photoshop. So you can scrub through the bottom here and you can see that the hyperlapse is actually in Photoshop now. If you hit this play button, it will play. We're getting a little lag down here. You can see this lag and that's because it's having trouble keeping up with the processing. You can do this drop down on your gear and you can do 25% resolution and then hit bit, a play and you're gonna get less lag. Um, another thing you can do is you can let it kind of render out. So if I go back to the playhead, this green bar, now it's gonna play smoother, right? Dropping this 25% down here is not gonna impact the final quality of your hyperlapse. So don't worry about that. Another cool thing you can do here is you can right click your hyperlapse and you can adjust your speed. And this is gonna adjust the speed of the hyperlapse, but not the frame rate. So I just dumped that up to 400%. So now my hyperlapse is only two seconds long, right? So it's gonna be way faster. And if you let that render out, you can see um, how much faster that is compared to the original 10 second hyperlapse. So that's gonna be like flying in. Yeah, cool. So I'm not actually gonna do that in Photoshop. I'm gonna save that for Premiere Pro. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back to 100. And then I'm gonna drag this back out to the maximum 10 seconds. Okay, we're gonna jump over to the version of this that I've already edited a little bit more and you'll see this levels that I've inserted here. So if you go up top here and you click levels, it's going to add a levels layer. You want to make sure it's above these layers. Okay. I'm going to actually delete that one because I already have one here. Make sure it's above these layers. It's going to show up on your timeline. Okay. And then you're going to pick a spot because we did this at sunset. I'm going to change the exposure a little bit and I'm going to sort of fade my exposure across the length of the hyperlapse. So I went over here and I put a keyframe down, click this little clock button that's gonna put your first keyframe in. So if you do that, see how it dropped in and on position, not gonna keep that, but do that for opacity, little clock frame, and then you get your keyframe. And then I adjust my exposure a little bit right here. I, I brought my highlights down a little bit, see that brightened it up. Okay, and then I moved my midtones a little bit too, okay? So I, I got it where I want it to be, and then I went back to the very beginning of my hyperlapse. I put another keyframe in under opacity and I set my opacity to zero. You see it over here on the right hand side, that's at zero. So it is not affecting the image right here, but by the time we get over here, it's at hundred percent. So the levels is being applied on the end versus the front. So if I go over here and turn this off, it looks the same, right? But if I go over here and I turn, I toggle on my levels on the right here, you can see how much brighter it is, right? So I'm fading the exposure in Photoshop, which is super cool. I don't know if you can do this in other programs. That's why I really like this workflow. Okay, so now that you've done that, you're gonna go up to file and you're gonna go to export and you're gonna do render video. Now you have your video, you're gonna name it properly and put it in a folder. Um, you're gonna do the Adobe Media Encoder, okay? And then H.264 for your format. And then you're gonna keep 1920. This aspect ratio is a little off, but we'll fix that in Premiere Pro and high quality. And then I did all frames because I want to export the whole thing and you just click render and it's going to render out your video. We are going to go ahead and import our file. So we're going to go over to media browser and we're going to locate our file and we're going to import that file. Now that we've imported our file, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and make a new sequence out of that. So we're going to go I'm gonna do uh, item in sequence, and I'm actually just gonna choose the digital SLR 24 frames a second, because that's gonna work. It's gonna give us the parameters we need. We're gonna drop our hyperlapse export from Photoshop down here. You're gonna you're gonna keep the existing settings. You don't wanna change that. You want it to be 1920 by 1080. If you wanna check that, you can go up here, sequence settings, 1920 by 1080, all these settings you want to be the same. Okay, and then we don't need the audio, so I'm gonna unlink that, delete it, boom. Okay, 
And now we have our hyperlapse here and it's gonna play a bit smoother here in Premiere Pro because it's, it's meant to handle video versus Photoshop isn't, but we have this hyperlapse, it's a bit shaky. So the first thing we're gonna do to make that go away, is we're gonna go over here to our effects tab, okay? Click it, boom, type in warp, warp stabilizer, drop that on. Uh, this is gonna happen because our file is not the proper size. So warp stabilizer requires clip dimensions to match sequence, okay, fixed by nesting. So hit control Z, if I click on that, go up to effects control, you'll see if I adjust my size, see how it's not actually 1080, it's not that the dimensions aren't accurate, okay? So we need to nest our clip, right click it, nest. Okay, so you have your clip nested, okay? And then you're gonna be able to drop your warp stabilizer onto it. It's gonna analyze the background and warp stabilize your image, which will make it way, 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 way smoother. Now our clip is stabilized, so I'm gonna play that back and you'll see how much smoother it is. Wow, it's so much smoother, that's amazing. All right, that's so cool. All right, but it's way too long. 10 seconds is way too long in my opinion. So I'm gonna actually play with the speed. I'm going to nest it again because the warp stabilizer does not always play well with other effects. So I'm gonna actually name it two, okay? So now it's nested inside of a nest. And we're going to go ahead and do a speed ramp. So click this little box right here and then go to time remapping speed. If you click over here, this is gonna show up. That's not what you want. Okay, so now we're in the appropriate, we have our time remapping speed set up. Hit your pen tool, bingo. And then select a spot in which you want to mark your increase in speed. So if you go over your V tool and then click on this little bar pull it up, see the percentages are going up four or five, six, nine, 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 100%. So I did a thousand, right? So the front of this is gonna be really, really fast. Okay, let's watch it one more time. See how it slows down right there? So you're gonna play with the speed ramp until you get it to be how you like it. And then I'm gonna nest it one more time. And then inside of this nest, which I should have named properly, I didn't. But inside of this nest, I'm gonna actually add a couple of uh, keyframes for scale. So right here, I'm gonna add scale and position, and then I'm gonna to go to the end, and I'm gonna add another scale and position, and I'm actually gonna zoom in and reposition this, okay? Just like that. And then let's see what that looks like. At the end, it's gonna zoom in. That's pretty cool. Great, all right, so if you apply those kinds of things and you play around with them until you get what you want it to look like, then you're gonna show up with a hyperlapse. This is my finished product on this one. So we warp speed into it and you zoom out and then I I actually made a copy of it and put it in reverse, okay? And then I put it in reverse, so it's got this boomerang effect. And then there's another version here. This is another version I shot of the same sign. And then you got the next version. So you have the two different versions that I've, that I've shot and put together as hyperlapses. And I sort of did a similar effect on both of them with adding the positioning and the framing and all that stuff. And then you're gonna go up to a final step. You're gonna go up to file and you're gonna go to export media. And then up here, you're gonna do H.264. <clears throat> and then you're gonna go to format. And then if, if I, I'm gonna put this on YouTube. So I'm gonna go to 1080 YouTube, select where I want it to go. I'm gonna hit uh, export and it's gonna export that file. Leave a comment below. Do you like the one that I walk through today better than the one on the other side? Let me know. I'm kind of interested to see which one you guys like better. I know which one I like better, but I'm interested to see which one you guys think is cooler. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful, give that thumbs up a little clickety clackety. I would really, really appreciate it. If you aren't subscribed yet, please consider. It is free and if it's free, it's for me. And I will see all of your lovely faces in the next episode. Peace.